was that dream all about? Some girl in a letter sweater. In the train station with guys singing a cappella. Man, here we are 1,200 miles offshore. And all you can think about is high school in New Jersey. I think I'm all slept out. Might as well get up. Get up feeling good. I think I get more sleep here than I do at home. I read all through the mid-watch, 12 to 4. Probably got about 10 hours. That'll have to wait. Hmm. Nice dawn. 15 knots. No wonder we slept so well, but that'll change during the day. It always does. Sort of makes you hungry, doesn't it? The night reef worked out fine. I don't know if this is the best method for making coffee at sea. I mean, really, a cone filter on a swinging gimbal stove. I couldn't agree with you more about that. Well, I've spilled it a couple of times, no question, but I like my coffee the way I like it, and I'm willing to clean up the mess. Wow. Man, we've been running all night at six knots plus. And here comes the sun. Yeah, you've been running all night off course by about 10 degrees because you didn't want to jibe at midnight. There was no reason to jibe at midnight. We can do it this morning. Well, then let's do it because we're 10 degrees off course. First things first, if you don't mind. There's nothing like breakfast. Nothing. And one thing I get to do out here that I don't get to do at home is to use a steel spatula on a non-stick frying pan where the threat of dying of microparticles hovers over me at all times. I realize that. A pancake should be three and a half inches in diameter. No more, no less. And you can do anything you want to with an egg, in my opinion. Eggs work. They just do. An appetite at sea is a good thing. Uh, and it flies in the face of the fact that I always lose about 10 pounds on these voyages. And, one, and once I lost 20 pounds after 11 days to windward when my back was out. And you get to read without the phone ringing or somebody saying, Honey, did you take the garbage out? Ah. The boat is neat as a pen, and I, I don't take that lightly. I, I feel it's very important, very seamanlike, to do the dishes. Do you think it's seeming like to perform the jibe that you've been putting off for hours? Yes, I do. Certainly. Looking forward to it on a pretty morning like this. Absolutely looking forward to it. We'll just let the pole go forward and furl in the Genoa jib. How many times have I done this? couple of hundred on this boat. I, 
I know there are other means of jibing a 38-foot, 16,000-pound vessel, but this one is the same technique used on a lightning sailboat, a day sailor. And it works. It's simple. There's a little bit of ballet required sometimes in heavy weather on the foredeck, but it's a carbon fiber whisker pole. It's not heavy at all. And with practice, you can sort of balance up here and manipulate all the strings necessary to change tacks from starboard to port so that we can get back to 240 magnetic, which is the course to Hawaii from here. Just switch from the one sheet to the other. Easy as pie, uh, sometimes. Usually. Analog. That's me, analog all the way. And if I were a wristwatch, you'd be able to tell time at a glance. Crank out the Genoa jib in the lee of the mainsail. Set the self steering gear and then do an offshore jibe. It works like a dream, even in 25 knots. No fouls. Regain course. Now reset the vein. Crank her out to her new dead downwind position. a marvelous place to be. Although at my age, any place is a marvelous place to be. You don't need a downhole on this rig because the, the block on the other side holds the pole down. Yes, you do always need a downhole. Well, the way you rig it is ridiculous. No, it's not. It uses the lazy sheet around the bow cleat and, and, and you just run it back and that holds the pole down. It functions as a four guy. Yeah. It functions as a four guy, but your sheet's not long enough, and every time you have to invent a new knot, to, I didn't invent that knot. It extends the lazy sheet enough so that I can trim it gently on a winch, and really makes a lot of sense. Simple. Well, the next time you buy new Genoa sheets, better make them 10 feet longer. I, I, I might well do that, yes. But for the moment, we're on course 240 magnetic, exactly the course to Hawaii and right where we want to be if you don't mind. I don't mind. You were just off course all night and probably added 20 miles to the total voyage. Boat food, they call it, or I call it. This is a sirloin steak stained pink. Oh, all right, it's spam, but last forever. I think this was packaged in 1842. Add relish. You know, you didn't put any non-skid under that uh, tray. It's going to slide all around. It, it won't slide around. Everything's going to be fine. Um, you don't always have to put non-skid under everything. You can do it the way you want to. Oh, okay. You've 
did it the way you want to. Congratulations. This whole boat smells like pickles all afternoon. No, it doesn't. And besides, pickles, whoops, taste good and smell just as good. I believe this is what we call a hearty lunch. I believe it's what you call a really weird lunch. What are they, hearts of palm? Yes, if we're washed up on a desert island with a single palm tree, you and I will be able to harvest luncheon. Hearts of palm. It's like a banana on a boat. It's just bad luck, I think. It's not bad luck. Whoever told you that hearts of palm were bad luck? Chianti. It goes with everything, especially with Spam. And we successfully completed our job. It's a wonderful reward. And then I'll have to do the navigation and send the satellite email home saying we're still alive and on course and all of that stuff. Well, that was a good nap. Of course, after 10 days at sea, there's no dirt at all on a boat. The only thing that soils our decks are flying fish, whose sad extremity of fate is to ram into us in the middle of the night thinking we're, I don't know, some kind of desert island or escape from some predator or whatever. But if the flying fish on deck aren't big enough to eat, then they have to be sluiced away. Otherwise, they, they dry out and get sticky and they're hard to remove. But what is the real reason for pouring buckets of 80 degrees seawater over your deck at one o'clock in the afternoon offshore? <laughs> it's because it's just plain fun. It's just a little duty that reminds you how lucky you are to be alive and here with the whole universe around you and nobody to interrupt. Almost nobody. I don't interrupt you. I, I help you through things. I, 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 I remind you of things. So be quiet and look around. We've been running like this for days. Seven, seven and a half knots dead downwind. It's amazing what a self-steering vane can do under these conditions. Our course is straighter than it would be if I were steering. And I sure don't want to steer. Ever. I don't know why you do this every day. Do what? Pour buckets of water over your head like a hippopotamus. I don't know, it saves water. We have 70 gallons on board for one person.
and we have a perfectly good shower with its own bilge pump and if you used the shower you wouldn't have to pour a tea kettle of fresh water over your head every time to keep from going to sleep at night with salt crystals in your ears and little tiny dead sea creatures. Thank you for those thoughts. The prudent sailor pays close attention not only to body but to mind. And he will find that the humble orange, unlike its hard-headed brother the coconut, is quite willing in its openness to receive your spirit or any spirits handy and make an afternoon respite from the drudgery of sailing a yacht across any ocean. Ah, the evening squalls right on schedule. I wouldn't call these squalls exactly. Well, maybe you're right. They're not blowing more than 25 knots or so at the max. But we'll just monitor it. We don't want to reduce sail? No, we'll, we'll monitor it. Oh, good. Monitor it. That sounds so official. I like rain squalls if they're not too severe. Even a light rain just knocks the sea down. It changes the sound of everything. It makes the horizon indistinct, but sort of wet and warm and friendly almost. I could stand up here for hours, and I, I have. Any change is welcome after days and days of blasting along through cobalt blue over an ocean three or four miles deep. It just reminds you how things can change suddenly. And the boat rides so well. They can grow quite strong, but these look benign. Just some raindrops just a little change from the routine. And when they're over, and they only last 20 minutes mostly, there's often a short duration of calm, pristine, nothing like it, except dinner. And Coleman Hawkins, what's that tune called? I think it's Like Someone in Love. Man, he rides those spots like moguls on a ski slope, although there are no spots unless somebody were to transcribe it. I think if, if Bach were alive today, he'd be writing stuff like that. Oh, who knows? This cabin is the size of a walk-in closet, and yet it has everything we need. Hmm. Twelve days out. Another couple of days we'll be there. If things hold and no hurricanes rise up from the equator to cut across our path, well, that usually doesn't happen. A good place to be of an evening. Everything you need, really, for a while. everything I need for a while.
It's the universe. That's all. It's the universe. That's all. It's just the universe. All right. Another day. Another 150 nautical miles. Another nap. I think it's good to catch a nap before a nap catches you.